what really shocked me, and it, shocked probably isn't the best word. I would say disappointed me was Jalen Carter at his pro day. Not oh. just because how sluggish he looked and how slow and how unathletic he looked. But that's a job interview. Yeah. That is the final stage of your job interview where you can land a multi-million dollar job. And he managed to cost himself millions and millions of dollars. And I don't know his circle. I'm not in his camp. I'm not sure what's been going on the last month or two where he's gained nine pounds and showed up to the most important day outside of the combine and the draft of his young professional career. I'm not sure what the lead up was, but I'm out. That was bad. That, that to me, isn't like a Laramie uh, Tunsil situation where the pot image comes out uh, hours, the day of the draft, I think is what happened that, that year, mm -hmm. uh, where he falls. <laughs> This to me, uh, how do you not show up to the most important day of your life ready for action? That's like you having a job interview, showing up for the final exit inter or excuse me, the final stage of the interview, and you show up in a, in a white beater, underwear, no socks, no shoes, and you smell like garbage. What are you doing? You had everything in front of you. You nailed the first part. You played very well in college. The tape is really good. Nobody really had character concerns. Right. While you were at Georgia. And now this? Look, from what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have always said, mm. they have their certain kind of guy. I'm not sure if they're willing to move off of that foundational uh, process. But if you have to take... And hear me very clearly here. Not only if you have to, but if you're going to take an interior lineman. Say it. Kalijah Kansi is the option at six. I know a lot of you are uncomfortable with it. I know a lot of you think he'll be there at 18. I'm telling you right now, that is the kid. That is the mold. Education off the roof, uh, off the charts, excuse me. Intangibles off the charts. Carried a horrible Pittsburgh defense on his back. Uber productive in college, no character flaws, high work ethic. He checks the boxes. Who else are you going to get at six? Tyree Wilson. And we'll get to this, by the way, at 845, because I don't think you can trade back. Unless you're going to trade back to the mid-teens, mm -hmm. which is not ideal in my opinion. No. So we'll get to that at 845. But Jeff, what the fuck? Yeah, this this is concerning. Uh, he Jalen Carter's made a name for himself. I mean, he was widely regarded as the number one player in this draft. And then you see things like this, you know, the workout. And it's one thing, again, we, we, we don't have to revisit the situation, but when the news broke and, you know, he got criticized and, and rightfully so, and, and, you know, he got in trouble for that. And you could question somebody's character or, or what they do off the field, right? You brought up Lar Laramie Tunsil. That's another situation. With this, though, not only can you question maybe things off the field, but now we're questioning things on the field. We're questioning what he's doing. And if you watch the video, it's bad. Like, he, he looked cramping. He looked completely cramped up. He looked slow, sluggish, overweight. I think it, it was said he was gained nine pounds. Like, once we once the, you know, off the field stuff, uh, the distractions, the not being focused, once that creeps onto on the field uh, production or simply just what you look like, that's a that's a huge issue. So for me, with the whole Jalen Carter stuff, I I sat up here, even you know last week, and I tweeted out a couple weeks ago, Jalen Carter come to the Detroit Lions. Well, after seeing this stuff, it it, it does not look likely. And if you look at what Brad and Dan look for in players, it's not that because the big thing about Aiden last year, drafting him number two overall, what was the number one thing they loved about Aiden? His motor. What kind of motor did Jalen Carter have? That's a Prius motor what he was displaying at the pro day like that that was disappointing so no i would say at this point jalen carter I, I don't think he's the option i don't I, and, and that's tough because well, i don't want to draft a player that you have to you have to you know worry about consistently because we, me and stick set up here the the i think it was a day after the situation happened and we talked and, and the big thing we discussed was well if he's remorseful and he learns from this situation i'm okay with it because we know the talent he has on the field 
But when you see something like a pro day like that, come on. Not, not only just off the field now, Adam. We're, we're talking about on the field. There's concerns. It's, it's, it's real. It really is. I, I just, for the life of me, will never understand how, as a young adult, which they're young, right? They're young men. How you haven't positioned yourself to understand you have millions and millions of dollars, generational wealth at stake. All you have to do is maintain shape, Perform to standard or above standard at your pro day. Show off your best qualities. Interview well. And you are going to land a contract that will take care of your family for the rest of your life. Yeah, you, you, and now we're talking about him falling from four, from five, from six, all the way to Chicago potentially at nine or maybe even the mid-teens. We're talking about millions and millions of dollars. I'm disappointed for him, not in him, right? For him, in a guy in his position too. You get drafted. You are the immediate breadwinner of your family. You are the unquestioned leader. J uh, Jalen Rose talked about this too when he was talking about John Morant. That's it's a huge responsibility. And what I mean by motor, and, and people are commenting, well, Jeff, you watch him at Georgia. He has a high motor. I'm not talking about on on the field in games, right? I'm talking about if if your job is to show up to pro day ready. And you can't even do that. It, you, it, how can you not question his motor or his commitment to football? That's the question I have. That's your pro day. And the, all this, this stuff came out about you know the car wreck and you being involved in the misdemeanors. And you show up to your pro day looking like that and you perform like that. And then the footage of the, him doing 85 and a four, or 89, excuse me, and a 45. Like that's, and the cop let him go because they didn't want the news to break that Jalen Carter. Yeah. Like, come on. That's a problem. Uh, again, a has a ton of talent. We, there's a reason why he was the number one player in the uh, in the draft because you watch him at Georgia this year. He was dominant on one of the probably the most dominant defense. But I'm talking about his commitment for him to show up like that. It's concerning. If you're taking this guy at six, Adam, you need full like trust that you can Let me ask trust you this. this man when he leaves the field Let when he leaves you your this, facility. Jeff. You're 22. Yes. Turning 22. No, you, no, you are 22. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Turning 23 in a couple months. So realistically, you've been alive, like vividly remembering probably eight, nine, ten at the most NFL drafts in your lifetime. Uh, yeah. Like vividly uh, as a young teenager to an adult. Mm -hmm. Okay. In my lifetime, very similar to yours, this happens every year. Sometimes with mid to you know mid to late first round prospects later round prospects and sometimes some of the best prospects micah parsons a few years ago it came out that he was hazing some teammates character issues did just fine but he always showed up in shape i know i know i'm, I'm gonna it, get to that and he crushed his pro day but i've also seen a handful of players in my lifetime who are one of the better prospects tape off the charts they have all the qualities, but then they show up overweight, or they underperform at the combine, or they don't answer or handle their interviews in the best way, or they get caught up in their posse or uh, their crew. They're not solely focused on being the best football player they can be. I'm not going to sit here and say Jalen Carter does not have a future in the NFL. Oh, he does. I'm absolutely not going to say that. He may still end up being the all-pro that many believe he can be. But when you are drafting a player, this is so concerning. Do you want to be the team that drafted Jalen Carter? Because everybody fell in love with him in college. But he could never get his act together. Do you want to be that team? And I'll tell you what, guys, not many teams want to do that. Not many teams want to take a, quote, chance on a guy when they're in the middle of a rebuild, trying to build and establish their own culture. And it's much easier for teams with an established culture and established winning history to take on these type of players. And yes, make them, uh, I don't want to say uh, line up and, you know, get them to stand in line. But, you know, that's, that's just how it is. And you can only do it for so long. I don't, I'm not saying Jalen Carter's a, a horrible human being or that he shouldn't be a, a top 10, top 15 pick. But it is concerning. 
And when we're talking about the Detroit Lions, the sixth overall pick this year on the defensive side of the ball has to be an all-pro player by his third year or you are going to have a ton of concerns. Hear me again, by the way. The sixth overall pick has to be in the conversation of an all-pro caliber player by his third year. And if he isn't, you legitimately will have concerns. That applies to Aiden, and that applies to Jeff Akuda when I give him shit all the time. Mm-hmm. Whether you like it or not. I don't care where you're drafted. Where does matter at some point. It does, yeah. So I don't want to hear it. The Lions are expecting this kid, whoever it is, at six, to be a difference maker day one and to be a potential Pro Bowl All-Pro player in the coming years. That's what you want out of these topics. Mm -hmm. So when you show up like a fat ass, nine pounds overweight, in less than a month to your job interview <laughs> and you look like a, a fucking snail running around and it's not just that that was after all the news and, and him huffing being, and puffing yeah. can't even breathe that, that's, and then i got to deal with all your legal shit yeah i'm not considering you no, right it, now you have a lot of work to do for me to reconsider drafting you at sixth overall right now it's concerning that that's jalen carter's way to respond to that type of adversity like when 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 bad stuff happens to you, you you can't get go down worse or get worse like that's what jalen carter did the situation happened the two misdemeanors and then now he bombs his pro day it's just it's it's not if you're picking at six you're looking for a foundational franchise player somebody you can trust and as talented as jalen carter might be and honestly the lions might pass on they might not i just don't think he checks a lot of the boxes they're looking for in a player and it's it's concerning it really is